Thanks for joining us today uh, for our last message of this modified spiritual deepening week. I hope these messages have been helpful to you as you learn to practice these essential postures of waiting, receiving, and being. Today we're going to close things out with the last one of these commands to, to be witnesses. And I wanted to start out with the Acts chapter 1 scripture one last time, but we're going to go in the full uh, length of it here. So Acts chapter 1 it says, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving these instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. So, let's work this out today. B. Notice how in the context, being comes as a result of waiting and receiving. It's impossible to be an authentic follower of God and at the same time, jump out ahead of God. And we also can't work our way into an authentic relationship with God. You just can't work your way into that. The only way to be the kind of person who is authentically a force for God in the world and in a vibrant relationship with God is through this kind of waiting, receiving, and being pattern. Now, begs the question, what do we become? What, what is Jesus asking us to be? And the answer is witnesses, right? Interesting that one of the most authentic things a person who's had a real encounter with Jesus and who's been filled with the Holy Spirit can be is simply a witness. Here's the definition of witness. It's one who has seen, heard, or experienced something, an event, or a person. Or I like the second definition too is evidence or proof. From the beginning of Jesus' ministry, one of the most fundamental responses to having a transforming encounter with Jesus is to become a witness. Think about it. When he, uh, we see this early on when, when he calls Philip, who immediately then goes and finds Nathaniel to share with him about Jesus. Anytime somebody's healed or forgiven or touched by Jesus, news spreads. Even if Jesus is telling them to keep quiet about it for the time being, they can't help it. When John the Baptist sent his disciples to Jesus to determine if he was the Messiah, Jesus told them to go back and tell John what they had seen and heard. Witnesses. So when those early disciples after Jesus had ascended and they'd waited and they were huddled together in a house in Jerusalem praying on the day of Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit rushed in like the wind and came to rest on them, the natural next step was that they were blown out of the house. Not to go get groceries or to go to work or to do some errands or whatever, but to be witnesses. Now, of course, as time went on, they had to do those other things as well, but they were primarily witnesses even as they were living out their everyday lives, because this is just who they were now. They are people now who had had an encounter with Jesus that changed their lives. Now, whether they were talking about Jesus or the reality of their changed lives were serving as evidence of the good news of Jesus, that's what was happening in their lives. They were witnesses. Central to the mission and function of the church 
is to be witnesses, not to stay huddled up in our Christian bubbles, but to come together for sure for worship and prayer and direction and guidance and encouragement and power from God. So in other words, to wait and receive on those things and then to get out and go to work engaging in the mission of God in the world, which is for people to be saved and for a world to be redeemed and restored. A little sidetrack here. Friends, I often see groups of Christians, mostly online, sort of wringing our hands about how to defend the faith or get out the news about Jesus or whatever in an increasingly pluralized world. As if the best way to be a witness is to like win some arguments or something. That there's this underlying idea that if we could just argue everyone into submission and show them through logic or something that Jesus really is the way, then everyone would give their lives to God. Wouldn't that be nice? But here's how it actually happens. More often than not, these groups turn into echo chambers of Christians arguing among themselves about the best way to win an argument. And the groups disagree and turn against one another. And before long, the community of Christ followers that was itself to be the evidence and the proof becomes the evidence to a watching world of the exact opposite kind of thing. That maybe there's nothing to Jesus after all. That Christian community just looks like all the other broken ones that we can get anywhere else in the world. So I want to remind us today, please hear me, it's not that logical, well-thought-out explanations of the story of Jesus and how it makes sense aren't worthwhile. They are, and, and I love those things. But the best defense of the faith that we have to show the world is the authenticity of our lives as we seek to follow Jesus, both as individuals who have been and are being restored and as a community of people who are doing that same thing life together. Now, I want to take just one minute to look at the last part of the context for our, our witness theme this semester. The last thing Jesus notes here is how the Holy Spirit will empower his followers to be witnesses in every circle of our lives and that our calling as witnesses is to be carried out in each one all the way to the ends of the earth. So, in that day, uh, and in ours too, we understand this, this was a very practical thing that Jesus had said. Start where you are and then fan out from there. Don't overlook your own neighbors on your way to Rome, but then don't forget about the global scope of God's work because you're only concerned with your own community. Now, it's not like these geographic locations correspond to a specific area for us today, but I think we can understand the importance of these concentric circles, right? That there are these multiple areas where the church as a whole needs a witness. And you and I are a part of that global mission. In our families, in our friendships, our dorm rooms, our classrooms, on the Treveca campus or in our neighborhoods, and then in our cities and our county and states and in our nations, and then all the way around the globe. We get a part to play in that. One of the beautiful things about Treveca is that we're a community that in some pretty powerful ways gets to participate in all of these circles of mission in the world. Think about it, we come from all over the world to gather here for a season to learn, to grow, to become skilled and educated in a variety of areas that will help us engage and serve in the world. And then we go out from here into all sorts of areas and fields and communities, in one sense, to do the work we've been trained to do, but in another sense, and I would argue a more primary and important sense, we're sent out to be witnesses to the life that Jesus brings in the world. So as we engage in the things we've been trained to do, we give witness to Jesus. And with our stories and our lives and our testimonies of how God has worked and continues to work in our lives, we become the witnesses to the good news of Jesus all over the globe. As I talk with you and 
get to know you these days, my heart is hopeful for the future of the mission that you are a part of and are now beginning to take the lead in. It's an old calling. It's been handed down for generations and it stretches all the way back to Jesus himself, sharing with his disciples that they should wait for the gift, receive it, and then be witnesses in the world. And now it comes to you. And so friends, I hope that as we've gone through these different postures that we sit in as Christians um, and, and need to become comfortable in, the posture of waiting before God, the posture of receiving the power of the Holy Spirit in your life to enable you and to live in faithful ways, and then to become and to be the witnesses to the life-transforming work that Jesus is doing in your life all over the globe. Uh, I hope that this week has been helpful as you've considered these things and, and that even today you can begin to think about where God might be leading you next to share a little bit of the light and the good news of Jesus in your small circle, your wider circle, or somewhere around the world. I wonder, could I pray with you this morning? Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for each student, faculty member, member of our community who's tuned in this week uh, or who has been a part of the worship services. God, we're trusting that you are still at work in this really odd time in our world, uh, that you're doing things in our character, in our minds, and in our hearts that are going to shape us in the likeness of your Son to be witnesses for you in the world. And God, that is the desire of our heart, that you would make us that light that you talked about, the city on the hill, the, that we might be the reflection of your character in the world um, in ways that really do point beyond ourselves. Uh, we want your name to be lifted high. We want the name of Jesus to be famous all over the world and for people to have life-transforming encounters with you. And so, God, we thank you for entrusting us with this mission. We pray that you'd go before us now, that you would empower us by your spirit, uh, not just for living lives faithfully before you, but for being that kind of witness in the world and that you would help us to be the witness that you've called us to be. And now, friends, may the Lord go before you. May he enable you and empower you, and may he help you to be his witnesses in the world. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.